we've been studying this thing of identifying self-glory and and I don't know about you, but I've been convicted to my core as I've walked through this whole thing. And these disciples, they weren't getting it. They were arguing with Jesus, who's the greatest? And really, listen, don't get caught up on trying to be the one that's identified as the greatest. That is self-glory. Uh, we said this last week, self-glory will cause you to pray in public what you should be kept in private. We said last week together, self-glory will cause you to be way too self-referencing when you're always talking about yourself. We said self-glory will talk when you should be quiet. When you should be, when you should be talking, self-glory will talk. Fourth, we said self-glory will cause you to care too much about what people think. And number five, we said self-glory will cause you to care too little about what people think. Now, if you want to hear those explained, go back and pick up the one before, but let's move on. The sixth way to find out self-glory is self-glory will cause you to resist facing and admitting your sins, your weaknesses, and your failures. Listen, even with your children, it's not wrong for a father to go, look, son, I'm sorry, I'm so, uh, that's wrong of me. I got mad or, you know, um, I conducted myself inappropriately or not right or whatever. It, it, it will resist, it will resist facing admitting sins, weaknesses, and failures. And, and then number seven is self-glory will cause you to struggle with the blessings of others. In other words, when someone else gets something, someone else is blessed, you know, uh, they, you begin to think, why is it they get that and I don't? That's self-glory, okay? Number eight, self-glory will cause you to struggle with not getting what you think you deserve. Kind of relates to that last one. And first of all, let me say this. We don't deserve anything. I mean, look, anything I've got, it's, the, it's God. It's because of Him. And He has the right to take it all away from me, okay? If He so desires. Job said that, he said, even though you slay me, I, I'm, a, I'm not going to forsake you. I'm going to praise you. It, God has the right to take, give me anything he wants and take anything away. Number nine, self-glory will cause you to be more, more, be more position-oriented than submission-oriented. That is good. That's so powerful. It is more position-oriented than submission-oriented. You and I should be this person that we're more submissive than we are position so we got to get ourselves where we're not looking for uh, greater in the eyes of men. But how can we submit more and get underneath authority and elevate them? A wife needs to understand self-glory that refuses to submit to her husband. It's a, a husband, it's, it's self-glory when you refuse to get underneath those God has put you over, okay? So as we wrap this up, um, I believe this is number uh, 10. If self-glory will cause you to control, uh, then to delegate. In other words, if you're a control freak, you, you can't trust anybody to do anything out from underneath your... Listen, I don't want to be a control freak. I don't have time for it. One, now I get so much I, I need to do. It. But but when you can't delegate, when you think... Why? Because you think you can do it better than anybody else. Two basic steps to humility. Number one, renounce the spirit of pride because it's totally not Christ-like. It is totally not Christ-like. Jesus was King of kings and Lord of lords in heaven, and he got himself under humanity, showing us that what? Pride is not the spirit of Christ. Number two, go to the person you repel the most and begin to do kind acts toward them. Um, you know, and that was the person that you just were so frustrated with that you, you really can't stand them. God, if you want to get humble, humble and go do acts of kindness toward them, okay? Jesus washing the feet of these men was the supreme act of servanthood, and yet the greatest proof of leadership. And, and as we close this, I want you to understand that, because I'm going to tell you something. Your flesh does not want to do what I thought these last few weeks. Mine doesn't, and yours doesn't. But boy, you know, think about it. He tells us that, that there are rewards for those in heaven who are the bottom of the totem pole, not the top, but the bottom. There you go. I hope these last few weeks will be a blessing to you. Thanks for watching Pastor Marvin Smith's videos on identifying and breaking the power of self-glory. We'll be looking at 10 different things to identify in our own lives to be able to break this bondage that we have with pride and arrogancy in our lives. So stay with us. Take this journey with us and with Pastor Marvin Smith. We'll see you next week. Thank you.